If you haven't seen the previous video in this series, follow the link on your screen or click the link in the description or pinned comment below. Alright, this movie is probably my most famous answer whenever someone asks me what my guilty pleasure movie is, so I'm going to give 50 cents for this personal affront, and no, I don't feel bad about it. The modern Columbia logo was based on a worker named Jenny Joseph who posed for it in 1992. She appears on every Columbia picture and does not receive any kind of residuals. I just mention it since this logo isn't long enough to sin and I had to find something. Cause sin's got, got a sin logos, y'all. And there you have it, folks. Straight from the horse's mouth, he admits that it isn't the length of the logos, it's that there are logos. So you people can stop writing in my comment section that it's the length. It's obviously the girth. Opening an Adam Sandler movie while filming on a location vacation cliche. In order for something to be a cliche, it would have to be overdone to the point of absurdity. To wit, this has only happened a few times in Adam's filmography where he was the film's protagonist. But now that I think about it, you would consider all these locations a vacation destination. I mean, you are from Tennessee. It was un. Believable. As unbelievable as this perfectly even spray on tan? Jeremy yells at the screen cliche. He took me to all these cool local places. This scene reminds me of an infuriating recent dental visit when the assistant would not stop. Skip. Well, we got a little drunk. Well, at least we know that Henry is an ageist, just sexist. What? This looks like an average 29 year old white woman. And what is sexist about what Harry Paratesticles does? He dates tourists and shows them a good time in Hawaii. There's nothing sexist about that, unless, of course, you're one of those weirdos that thinks a man being able to successfully court women is problematic. He clearly doesn't discriminate. Besides, the only reason you're saying this is because you're being fat phobic. Fat ph Fat. Uh, all right, I can't bring myself to say this dumbass word. Do me a favor, SJWs. Work on your lexicon, please. Putting phobic after everything makes no fucking sense. You people say the hatred of trans people and fat people is phobia, but at the same time say the hatred of women is misogyny. See how the latter has a cool word that makes sense? Yeah, try that. Henry Roth, why didn't you tell me you were a secret agent? This movie not only sets up the age-old guys or dogs who lie to women to get them into bed trope. And let me stop you right there. The previous sin, you were talking about how this makes Henry sexist. Now you're calling this a trope and sinning it because you think this thinking is old hat. Make up your mind, dude. Is it Uchi Wally or is it one Mike? You see what happens when you play with sharks? I refuse to image search wound patterns for shark attacks in order to confirm my suspicion that this perfectly clean arc-shaped laceration is not how a shark bite would appear on a body. I'm just gonna send this not a shark bite anyway because I can. You should have Googled it anyway. I mean, the first thing that came up when I Googled shark bite was this image right here, which suspiciously looks exactly like Ula's wound. Funny that. Why well, stack two unused boxes of Aquafresh toothpaste on the top shelf and have a filled toothpaste container upright on the lower shelf? This is a man who eats candy for breakfast. Do you think he overprepares for dental hygiene? This is also a man who f**ks for sport. How is his precious storage space used for extra toothpaste and not medicinal creams to soothe his recurring genital rashes? Okay, so the movie doesn't tell us he has an STD, but do the math. It's a statistical probability. Okay, what the hell was all of that? I assume most people have multiple tubes of toothpaste, my dude. Unless, of course, you're British and you don't even know what we're talking about. But what is up with this puritanical view on sexual relationships? Assuming he has STDs is some comical pseudo-incel shit. What, are you jealous that this guy fucks? It's called condoms, Jer. I know sexual education is backwards in the South, but come on. You get some boobies, some assy, a pull on your boy boy, come on. This movie made almost $200 million at the box office. That should probably be a hint that you don't know what people like. This movie is not only hilarious, but extremely heartwarming. It's almost like Adam Sandler knows what the audience actually cares about. Penguin ass on your map. I'm just saying, don't blame me if some undiscovered islands show up next time you try to navigate. That's a little warm. Go to the bottom of the barrel, please. Oh, f*** you, movie. I know you want to establish Sandler as some sort of veterinarian god, but there's no way he could tell the minute difference in temperature between the fish at the top or bottom of the barrel. Or that it would even really matter. Finding the right fish would be as easy as shooting... I know there's a saying, but work here. Frogs in a bucket? 
Well, this is stupid for a variety of reasons. You yourself just said the movie is establishing Henry as a top-tier vet. Hell, the entire plot of this movie happens because he wants to go study walruses in Alaska. He clearly knows what he's talking about. Beyond all that, have you never had sweet iced tea from a fast food restaurant? I know that sounds weird, but stick with me here. Iced tea almost always has different layers of temperature, where the less dense liquid at the top is colder than the liquid that is being sucked up by your straw, annoyingly enough. The fish in this barrel are working on the same concept, except flipped. When ice melts in pure water, the cooler water sinks while the warmer water rises. This means the fish at the top that were recently put into the barrel would be warmer. Science. It works, bitches. <laughs> You needed the fish slap to calm down. If it's not enough to highlight that the lead in this movie is a womanizer, let's also be sure to showcase that women who look masculine are props for deprecating comic relief. Jeremy, basically every character in this movie who is not Lucy, Henry, or Marlin is comedic relief. You just made fun of Ula, a pigeon-speaking, marijuana-toking slacker with more kids than the Wayans. So, it's funny to me when you're suggesting that Alexa is a woman and that it's bad to make fun of her when she quite clearly states that she is a man. There's a scene where Alexa states they have a dick. So, this actress is playing a bisexual man that is simply androgynous, and the movie is treating this character like they treat all the other characters in the film. That sounds pretty progressive for a 20-year-old movie. I get you spam and eggs. Will Henry have to pay for that breakfast you were forcefully ordering for him? Does he have no say? When does this ever happen in a restaurant? Jeremy has never been to a hole-in-the-wall restaurant that is run by old Asian ladies. And that, my friend, is an absolute shame. Want for me to put peanut butter cups in your eggs? No, that's okay. It's an actual conversation in this movie. Jeremy would be excellent at Nick, because that's what he's saying. It was then that the penis-centered hero of our story spotted his next mark. She happens to be smart enough to see through his bullshit, but is also brain damaged and can't remember his triggery. This, friends, is the central part of the plot that holds this movie together. This is Henry falling in love with Lucy. She is not a mark. You're also getting ahead of yourself, as he hasn't learned that she has brain damage yet. How about waiting for these things to happen and then complain about them, dickwad? How scalding must the coffee have been in order to mix with syrup and 40 seconds later maintain a steam stream? Too hot to drink, that's the answer. Jeremy, she already poured out the syrup, dude. I swear, your head is for decoration. Also, playing with your food. Crafting a waffle volcano is all fun and games until the coffee lava erupts and causes third-degree burns on little Timmy's pitching hand and ruins his chance at supporting his family through Major League Baseball. His mom will now die at 50 because they didn't have enough for her crucial clavicle operation and all because you thought it would be fun to play food geologist instead of just eating your damn breakfast. Happy now? He said all of that and completely missed that Lucy is making houses out of her waffles. This is a teepee is what I'm saying. That cheated on you with whole wrestling, Tim. <laughs> Close. Actually, it was my college girlfriend, Tracy. Phew. Without this microscopic glimpse into his past, I would have gone the rest of the movie so confused as to why he somehow justified in all his ass baggery. I am still failing to see the problem with what Henry does. He dates women while they're on vacation in Oahu. Why does this make him a bad person? For all the current year you're doing, you would think casual dating would be the one thing you'd ignore. He doesn't owe these women relationships. I mean, when men call women hoes for doing the same thing, you people, rightfully so, call them out on it. So is it only bad because a man is doing it? That's sexist. Why don't you try this? Inventing the Waffle House. Also, Henry touches Lucy's waffle with his bare fingers, and somehow this works, even though it does not work later. Which is the premise of the film. 50 first dates means he has to impress her over and over, and using the same tactics might not work because humans experience a variety of emotions from day to day. One day, I would kill to eat a pizza, and the next, I'd prefer a salad. I just hold on to them for five minutes each. Minutes? Touching anyone for more than five seconds is a sin. I don't care if they're family. Jeremy is every anime protagonist when the love interest wants to hold hands. I think Tattoo Face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have to play you the full joke for you to know whatever this punchline referred to could never have been funny enough for that reaction. Well, considering the joke was that walruses have the second biggest dick in the animal kingdom and Nick has the first, I'd say Lucy's reaction to this joke was that it helped break the ice. When that happens on a date, everything is magnified. I've been on many dates and told many jokes. Jokes that I didn't think would go over sometimes got the biggest reaction because it was the one that broke the ice. I call those jokes, that thong is coming off tonight jokes, cause when I get those laughs, I get to take off my thong later. This restaurant cove is beautifully located, all tucked in away from the open sea. Which, of course, is nothing like what we were shown earlier when Henry had to abandon his boat to find this quaint spot in the first place. This is a scene manipulation. Jeremy shows Henry piloting the dinghy from his boat, but there is an establishing scene later showing the Hukilau Cafe is surrounded by greenery. 
What Jeremy shows is Henry on this water, which is a later part of Henry piloting to the cafe, not him going directly from his boat to the cafe. That's the stupidest looking swing I've ever seen. Thinking that referencing Happy Gilmore will make this movie any better. Isn't that your entire gimmick with these videos? You know, thinking making random movie references makes your videos funny? My life sucks. Says a man with several talented children, an ability to surf, time enough to meet people in bars, and golf leisurely. It's all relative. Ula is referencing Henry's uncanny ability to court beautiful women. A married man who is tied down with kids and a not conventionally attractive wife would absolutely think their life sucks in comparison. Give her the white kiki -ki -ki sneaky between the cheeky. This movie has a 6.8 rating on IMDb. Because that shit was funny. Seriously, say it aloud. The why kiki ki sneaky between the cheeky. Are you getting drunk? Are you eating a flower? When I was a kid, I was watching Charlie's Angels with my mom. There was a scene where Drew Barrymore did this. I like fast everything. Aside from my pants suddenly gaining about three pounds, I didn't understand what it meant. So I'll tell you what my mother told me. You'll understand when you're older. That guy over there could help you out. So I guess Alexa's just hanging out on the off chance that there are sex scraps at the bar? Or is the movie just gonna use her as a throwaway cheap laugh prop when they're not sure how to end a scene on writing Merritt alone? Says the guy that does exactly that in nearly every video. I've called you out on this before, so I'll just play myself saying this in the Alita Battle Angel video. That scene in Muppet Christmas Carol, where the penguins and other animal townsfolk slide down the sheet of ice and do tricks. Except here, it's not penguins. More charming. I'm convinced that CinemaSins writes these ridiculous sins in order to smoothly include a scene they would otherwise skip in order to include a related scene that they actually have a problem with. My problem isn't that they do that, but that they skip relevant scenes all the time. So why not now? She just can't retain any new information. It's like her slate gets wiped clean every night while she sleeps. It's like Memento meets Groundhog Day, but with lots of genital humor. Amazing. You are criticizing something for mixing film references and genital humor. This is like the pot calling the kettle a pot. She reads the newspaper, though. It's a special paper her father puts on their porch every night. He got hundreds of them printed out. Printed hundreds of the same paper to gaslight his sick daughter into believing the delusions of her disorder are real? Dads, am I right? As the movie explained, they tried telling Lucy the truth and she freaked out every time. So it was better for her mental state to believe she was reliving the same day every day. And that's not what gaslighting means. Gaslighting means to manipulate someone into doubting their own perception, which causes them personal distress. Since Lucy already believes she is reliving that day, all they are doing is helping her to be comfortable. Misusing the term gaslighting is actually harmful and you should be more responsible with its use, joke video or not. The lady at the farmer's market gave it to me as a birthday present. I think she likes you. I think that pineapple was taken out of the deep freeze last night and should be f***ing cold right now and Lucy would notice, especially if she cuts it open for her cake and finds pineapple ice crystals. Firstly, pineapples should be cold. There would be nothing out of the ordinary for produce being cool to the touch, as that is how you preserve them, especially in a tropical environment. And second, he took that pineapple out last night. This is Hawaii, son. Have you ever been to Hawaii? I have, and let me tell you, that f***ing place is sweltering. I went in the fall, and this thing was damn near melted by the time I was done with it. Try not to sweat in the sauce. But dirty shoes on the counter are just fine. Eh, it's not getting in the sauce, though. The real sin here is shoes in the house at all. They score here, they bring it to 14 to 10. Ooh, maybe they'll win for your birthday, Dad. Also, doesn't she know that NFL games wouldn't be on at night in Hawaii? The games start at 7 in the morning there. And even the late games are on in the early afternoon. You're right that this game was happening at roughly 8 or 9 a.m. in Hawaii. However, you're missing that, like most women in America, Lucy isn't exactly a sports aficionado. This is proven by her not realizing the game should be on at this time. She sees her brother and father watching a game. She has no reason to not believe the game isn't on, especially because there are Sunday night games. This sin is weak. Happy birthday, dear dad. Happy birthday to you. You'd think after singing this song 365 times that Doug would have learned how to sing in key with his sister, but nope. Completely missed the point of the scene. Doug's off-key singing is a sign of his exasperation. They even show another element of this when Lucy suggests they should watch The Sixth Sense for the hundredth time. Uh, uh, pretty sweet, huh? Stop it! You're gonna make me throw up on the cake. No, oh, uh, sorry, wrong clip. Open your present. Oh, The Sixth Sense. Hey, when I'm done doing the dishes, do you guys wanna watch it? Sure. sure. I can't believe it, Bruce Willis 
It's a ghost. I'm just, I'm shocked. If you didn't know the twist to Sixth Sense until five years later when you saw it on VHS, I don't know whether to congratulate you or feel sorry for you. So I'll just go with, I don't believe you. They live in Hawaii. One thing I noticed when I was there was that they don't have many movie theaters, at least in Oahu. That was in 2021. This movie roughly takes place in 2003, back when movie culture wasn't as big as it is today. Needless to say, going to see The Sixth Sense when it first came out probably wasn't a big priority for Hawaiian residents. Shit, dude, there are still people who haven't seen No Way Home. How have they gone an entire year without colors fading in the wash or the fabric wearing down? Is this movie saying that Purex takes out all stains and maintains the perfect pink? And for a few days every month or so, she's probably having a surprise stain on those white pants that Purex miraculously takes care of as well. I'm saying the product placement is woefully overlooked. Or they could have been buying the same or similar clothing and just washing it until it gets ruined? Your cynicism has overtaken your imagination, and when that happens, it's time to hang it up. If the idea here is that Lucy would notice a few millimeters of soap missing from the container, wouldn't she also notice her hair growing? Or do they snip her hair while she sleeps? Come to think of it, and I don't want to get too personal here, but if Lucy went to bed shaved clean, is she waking up clean shaven again? Or do we just skip over the mental confusion of Pylos, Pitts, and Instabush? Since it doesn't come up, the implication is that Lucy doesn't shave her pubes. And I'm okay with that. Appreciate your interest, Oprah, but leave me alone. Funny, the plants must be screaming the same thing at him because they are living on a fucking boat. What the hell does that mean? Are you saying that plants don't need to be watered because they live on a boat? What? You got a cat because I feel something licking me. Trying to have sex with pets around. What? Who is trying to have sex in this scene? And if you're implying Henry has sex here on his boat, what pets does he have? The penguin is at the aquarium. What the hell are you talking about? I bet you 20 bucks I can get her to have breakfast with me again. Says the guy who literally said after being asked why he wouldn't date a woman with a brain injury that it's evil. Two minutes ago in the previous scene. Do they think because the movie is about short-term memory loss that the audience has it too? Not the audience, but apparently you do. The reason Henry said it's evil was in response to Ula suggesting he could date her and just disappear without her ever noticing, not about him dating her at all. One is taking advantage of a person's disability, and the other is courting a woman on Dante Must Die mode. Do you realize how long a gumball will have been sitting in this closed-in machine for it to get to you? Whose idea was it to be like, Skip! <laughs> this cringe is on for some time. One of the best scenes in the movie. I guarantee I can get the people watching this video to laugh just by playing this scene. You can have some breakfast and I'll help teach you some of the words. <laughs> okay. Come on over. Okay, thank All you. Right. See? I thought, hey, if this guy is so desperate to meet me, he might be worth talking to. Tell me a dude wrote your movie without directly telling me a dude wrote your movie. Tell me you're trying to pander to Twitter without telling me you're trying to pander to Twitter. If what you are implying were true, it would have actually worked, genius. Any guy who's okay with that ain't okay with me. And also a man who gave chase to his daughter and followed her home in his truck like a goddamn stalker isn't okay with you either, right? Which is why he's confronting him? I don't get your issue. What do you want him to be? More angry than angry? He asked me not to go to the hooky row. I'm not going to the hooky row. Not doing anything wrong. No, he specifically said, Stay away from my daughter. Mr. Boner-induced selective hearing guy. First of all, Jeremy says Boner. Second, you're being disingenuous again. Marlon said that at the beginning of their conversation, before Henry tried explaining himself, he actually did say, Give us a break. Just stay away from the Hookie Lab Cafe. My daughter's been through enough. Holy sh**. Where did he get all these blockades and such? Do they have a quick and easy road construction supply store in town? Dude, these are like 40 bucks at Home Depot. Henry is a doctor. He can afford these props is what I'm saying. Excuse me, can I borrow this? Look, October. What? I'm glad the movie is finally addressing it. But this would literally happen all the time if this were real. And it did. As I said, they literally say this happened all the time in the film. Lucy has good days and she has bad days. But I pose this question to the watchers of this video. How do you know you aren't reliving the same day over and over? What if you suffered a brain injury and as a scientific study were in a Truman Show-like production where everyone and everything was dedicated to making you think your life was reality? Think about it. You had no reason to think that until I just asked you that question. This is what it's like for Lucy. She has no reason to believe it's not October 13th, 2002. Since she doesn't venture into the city on Sundays, she doesn't notice small things that could tip her off to her reality not being real, especially when her family and the workers of the Hookie Lao Cafe work hard to the contrary. 
Is there anything more depressing than seeing a folder that you assume would be filled with cards from your students, but upon flipping open is as empty as your memories of yesterday? So are you saying a movie that you've been shitting on is accomplishing its goal of making you feel some emotion towards Lucy? Jeremy sends something he likes, cliche. So you guys have to just lie to me every day. No, they choose to lie about you every day, but sure, let's have a moment to make this about them. Gah. She said to, not about. Those words are not interchangeable in this context as it changes the entire meaning of the sentence. I suck at this job. Nah, you're fine, made up idiot and a movie guy. The real people who suck at their jobs are the writers who thought this scene was funny or needed. Things Birdman fans say about CinemaSins. I think you should meet 10 Second Tom. We call him that because we're a professional medical institution that of course gives nicknames to our patients based on their disability. Hope that doesn't offend you, Lucy Luzaday. No, it didn't offend people in 2004, but there were some people born in 2004 that it offends. But who cares what they think? They think septum piercings are cool. In 2032, they're going to look back at those the same way we look back at these. The fuck were we thinking? Oh, don't go just because my thumb is psychotic. Mocking your child's speech impediment. I feel like lisps are the one thing that we all agree are funny as hell. Speak for yourself. My name is Lucy. Is, is he wearing her shirt? Or did they manage to find a pink replica last night at a random store in the area? And if it is Lucy's shirt, does that mean that Henry came back to the house to wash it? So Lucy was wearing a clean one this morning? Or is she wearing the same shirt that Ula wore while creating the video last night? This matters to me. Bruh, why do you think it's difficult to find a nondescript pink t-shirt? Is there a shortage of pink tees in Tennessee or some shit? Do y'all not have swap meets? Oh, come on, stop with the licking, you're making me sick. <laughs> I'll just point out that Henry chose to keep this in the final edit of his videotape. Because it was funny, and he figured she would laugh at it. You know, like how she laughed at the dick joke earlier? <laughs> this movie was called The Last Good True Adam Sandler Movie by a popular website in 2020. Well, they were wrong because Uncut Gems came out, but you are implying that this movie is bad, and I'm sorry, bud, it's just not. Besides, that would be a sin for that writer, not this movie. Every day you help her to realize what happened and you wait patiently for her to be okay with it. Then you get her to fall in love with you again? Underused Maya Rudolph is right. How does this work on a day-to-day -day basis? Does he not have to go to the aquatic center job anymore? How do Marlon and Nemo, sorry, Doug take the time they need to fish? Or at a bodybuilding contest? Is there some sort of settlement that gives all these people the ability to just drop everything in their life to make Lucy's perfect day a reality? And once again, CinemaSins edits a film to make it seem like it's saying something it's not saying. She wasn't questioning the logistics of Henry's plan. She was suggesting that it was romantic, you idiot. Here's the full scene. Can you get her to fall in love with you again? Yes, ma'am. Gosh, you asshole. You don't even open the frickin' car door for me anymore. All I know about walruses is that out of all mammals, they have the second largest penis. I have the first. Oh, that's my joke. Yeah, we know. You were so proud of it, you put it in your movie twice. Again, coming from the dude that literally does genital humor in every other video. How do you criticize someone for something you do on the regular? Did you tell Lucy about this trip yet? Well, actually, there's nothing to tell because I decided not to go. A strange response when he has told Lucy before. She wrote about it in her journal, and it was far enough in the past to not be on a recent page. What are you not getting about Lucy's memory erasing every day? Henry's point wasn't that he didn't tell her, only that he changed his mind. You are framing this as if he said he hasn't. Saying there is nothing to tell to someone who has short-term memory loss means he's not putting it in her video. He has no idea she keeps a journal. This journal is what leads to their breakup. Watch the damn film. Could I have one last first kiss? Let me guess, instead of him coming back out of the rain, you're going to walk into the rain because kissing in the rain cliche. Have you ever kissed someone in the pouring rain? It's terrible. Rain kissing is the hot tub sex of rom-coms or beach sex or kitchen table sex. Just have sex in your beds, people. <laughs> Jeremy is trying to imply not only has he had sex before, but he did it in all these places. <laughs> <laughs> Candace, Bernice, and Rose. Polly Waller is shaming. Says the guy that has been shaming the main character for being promiscuous. One of the most shocking moments of this movie is that Marlon wraps a CD for Henry. Marlon spent a year rewrapping a VHS cassette every fucking night. You know he's tired of wrapping things. Or he's good at wrapping things. Is he trying to tell me something? Wouldn't it be nice if we could wake up? 
She only sings on the day she meets you. She remembers me? Generally, uh, I send when a movie flashes back to obvious things we know, so it makes sure we put the pieces together. But in this case, I need more flashbacks. If Marla knew she was painting Henry every day, why not just say so instead of playing this coded Beach Boys she's singing again game bullshit? Why well, trust Henry to make this diamond head size leap in logic? Probably because the movie isn't saying this is Marlon's plan. Henry was the one to put these concepts together, and it turns out he was wrong. You know all about that, don't you? What would you say if I told you that notebook you read every day used to have a lot of stuff about me in it? I would say that that makes a lot of sense. F***ing what? And f***ing why? There's so little reason or hint given for this selective memory return that this whole happy ending might as well be a day to sex remember you. What? This scene totally makes sense. Lucy says she sees the same face in her dreams, and she knows she's seeing the same face because she paints that face here in the studio, but she doesn't know why. Then the guy with that actual face shows up, and he tells her, a person who is aware they have a memory issue, that she purposefully forgot him. How is this being selective? Here's a fun part of the movie where we are expected to jump forward something like seven years and suddenly accept that Lucy has the ability to wake up on a boat with a remake of her bedroom in the frigid temperatures of Alaskan waters without a really traumatic reaction. This implies that boats have no way of making the living quarters comfortable for humans, and that's dead wrong. But beyond that, there have been times where I woke up from some incredible sleep and didn't know what century I was in. This is a whole lot of nothing. Lucy realizes she's in a fake bedroom on a tiny ship, and my question is, where does everyone else sleep on this thing? There is nothing tiny about that boat. Hell, the bed she was in was at least a queen, which means they fit a queen bed and still had space for the TV and dressers. They all sleep in here, is what I'm saying. Good morning, Mrs. Roth. Would you like to meet your daughter? Why would it not mention that she has a child in the video before she heads topside? We know it's for the audience surprise, but she should be told why her feet are larger, boobs are lower, and hips are wider. I mean, I know not every woman goes through a lot of physical changes, but at the very least, let her prepare emotionally. No, the audience is the only one that finds out this way. We never see the entire video, only the part where they have a wedding, and we know there is more to that video than just that part. There is almost certainly a section where it mentions her daughter. I'm sorry. What the absolute f*** are two tiny pink bikes doing on a goddamn boat? Where is the little one going to ride off to? Who's going with her that would also need a tiny bike? Why are the adults okay with wasting precious cargo space on useless bikes? Jeremy thinks there is no land in Alaska. The largest landmass in the United States. 